Hello everyone, this is Houston Brown with Houston Brown Photography and in this video we're going to cover another way to do sky replacement. Now in a previous video, which I'll put right up here, I showed you how to use a little technique using inner glow to get rid of some of the fringing on the leaves when you replace the sky, which is pretty typical. Um, it's, I ran into another technique the other day um, on YouTube that I want to share with you that works pretty well. But I might, I don't know if I can take credit. I'm sure someone's done it before. Maybe you've done it before. But I'm going to show you yet another technique that for me works the best I've ever used. Now, I know there's plugins and stuff that you can use. I've never tried those. I've watched tutorials on them. I'm not a big person for plugins. I'd rather know how to do it myself. But that's just me. And it does take a little bit more time. But I will leave that to you. Just it's always good to have a couple of techniques in your arsenal so let's get to it so I have this image here and it's a sunset shot believe it or not but in order to get some of these exposure here in the foreground I had to really blow out the sky so the sky obviously needs to be replaced so I went from this to this and I just want you to take note of how nice that the leaves um, look against the blue sky now we could probably soften these edges up a little bit, but I think you would admit that this looks pretty darn good. So let's see where how we're going to go about doing this. I brought this image into Photoshop already, so I'm just going to jump over here to Photoshop. And here we go. And there's another technique I use to separate the sky out. Now I know there's applications to do this, and if you use those, then you probably don't need this video, or you might want to see another technique to do it but I use levels on the blue channel to separate the sky from the foreground and uh, I have another video to do that we're going to kind of go through it here anyways because it's part of the process but I'll just put a link up here so you can go look at that and another technique to get rid of this white fringing that you, you're typically going to see around all these leaves when you're done with this technique or any other technique uh, I see it quite a bit even in images on websites where you see that white fringing on the leaves so how do we get rid of that I know there's a couple other techniques I ran into this the other day um, just playing by myself I'm not saying I'm the discoverer I'm sure it's been done before or maybe it's even obvious I don't know but I just want to share with you the way I got rid of it and probably the technique I'm going to be using uh, from this point forward so I'm going to go over here to the channels tab I'm going to pick the blue channel I'm going to click and drag down here to create a new channel, which is just going to make a copy of that. I'm going to bring up my Levels dialog box, which is Command L, Control L on the PC. So I can bring up my levels here. And I just want to bring in these levels until the trees are black or everything in the foreground. Now, the, the water is going to kind of mess with us, but that's not going to be a problem because we have this straight horizon line. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. So I want to separate. The, I want to make the trees and everything in the foreground black and the sky white. So let's start pulling over the blacks until everything seems pretty black. And this kind of a kind of just go back and forth. And then you see that kind of band at the top where it's a little gray. And I just keep bringing over the white until that that's perfectly white. Bring this in until it's black again. And I'm just I want to get these as close as possible maybe somewhere in here and I'm just gonna say okay now we're still left with some you know the pole this picnic table that was in the foreground and all this water that you can see through the trees well I'm just gonna put a square marquee around this area since we have a straight horizon I can just put this box here and I can just fill this with black and I don't have to worry about all that because we know that I don't want the sky peeking through on there. We're trying to create this mask. As far as the pole goes, we can easily remedy that by just taking a hard edge brush. Let's zoom in here a little tighter and making it the width of the pole, which I've already done. So I'm going to click here just one time. Just click. Then I'm going to go to the top of the pole. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click up here. There we go. And we might have to tweak that a little bit, but for demonstration purposes I think that's good enough now I'm gonna hold down the command key or the control key on the PC and I'm gonna click 
on this blue channel and that's going to create a selection for us now that is selecting the sky so i'm going to go up here and click on my rgb layer so i get all my colors back then go back over here to layers then i want to create a mask for this now since the sky is picked if i click on mask it's going to do the opposite of what we want i'm going to undo that and that's okay you could have inverted that mask i'm just going to show you you can also hold down the option key or the alt key on the PC and just click on create a mask and it will already come up inverted for you. So now that we have that, I've already brought in a sky, so let's turn on the sky layer and here's what it's looking like. So not too bad, but if we zoom in here, you'll see this kind of white fringing. This one isn't bad at all. I probably should have made it worse but it's still there. So if we want to absolutely get rid of it, I'm going to create a new layer, just a blank layer. I'm just going to leave it called its de default name. And here's the little trick. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to use my clone stamp tool, pretty big brush, soft edge. Uh, we don't need 100%. Let's take this all the way down to uh, 10% flow and 50% opacity and I'm going to sample in here where I see just leaves. Now this, this is where it gets maybe a little tricky even though we're current below notice I have aligned unticked because I just want to sample this area over and over and over. I'm just trying to get some of the colors that are already in this image which are going to be right here. So if I click up here I'm going to sample right there and I just, oh, the other thing I have to do is clip this layer to this image below it. So we'll do that. That way it'll only be applied to the masked layer. So now if I just do this, you can see, now that might be a little too dark. So I'm going to undo that. So let's sample out here where it's a little bit lighter. And this is all to taste. I'm going to change my sample point to here and just color. Now the advantage to having the aligned is that every time I lift, I sample the same area. No matter where I put this, see it's sampling in that same area, which is what I want because I don't want to have to worry about sampling, unsampling, sampling, unsampling. So I'm just going to kind of go around and get rid of anywhere I see any of this white fringing like let's say if I zoom in here it's, it's kind of bad in here and I'm just painting I'm using a pen a Wacom tablet so I'm just over and over and over and over and over and over now down here we're not clipping because oh no no we are we are sorry that was my bad but remember, below this horizon, like if I paint it in here, of course, everything should be fine down here. Everything above the horizon should be have that white fringe. Everything below it is going to be a little messed up. Now, you might be saying, well, this is going to take too long. And that's fine. I get that. If you don't have this kind of time to put into your images and you have a faster technique, then so be it. So I'm not going to do this whole image, but I think you get the idea. Let's zoom in here again. Let me fix this up a little bit more. And you see, I could keep going and get rid of all that, but here's the before and there's the after. So what we're going to end up with, I'll jump back over here to Lightroom, is something like that. And I think that looks pretty nice. Hopefully that helps you out. I want to thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.